In this lesson, we're going to cover representations of functions as power series. And this is our second lesson of a two-part lesson, so make sure if you didn't watch the first one that you go back and watch that one. This theorem says if the power series, and we have a series c sub n of x minus a to the n, has a radius of convergence where r is positive, then the function f defined by, and we have f of x equals, we have c naught plus c sub 1 times x minus a plus c sub 2 times x minus a squared plus dot dot dot. And then we have our general form right here, is differentiable and therefore continuous on the interval. And we're going from the center a minus r all the way to a plus r. And then we have the following. We can find the derivative of this function. And this right here represents the derivatives of each of these terms. Or you can see that it's written out right here where we're taking this sigma and we're taking the derivative again with respect to x. We bring the power n down to the front so that you have n times c sub n. You leave this x minus a, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent, so you get n minus 1. So in this lesson, we're going to take derivatives of functions where we're taking the derivative term by term, and then we'll also demonstrate taking the derivative in sigma notation as well. And then we'll also be taking the integral of the functions. So here you can see we have c, our arbitrary constant, plus c naught times the quantity x minus a, plus c sub 1 times x minus a squared divided by 2, plus c sub 2 of x minus a to the third power divided by 3, and so on. Again, we'll be doing term by term integration, or we'll also be taking the function in sigma notation and integrating it to get to here, where again you have your arbitrary constant, and then we take this n and we add 1 to our exponent, and then we divide by that new exponent, so we have n plus 1 on the bottom. And then it says the radii of convergence of the power series in the above equations are both going to be r. This example says express the function 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared as a power series using term by term differentiation. And we're going to do so using this equation from our previous lesson. All right, so I took this equation and I wrote that we're going to take the derivative of it. We have d dx of this first part, 1 over 1 minus x, then the derivative of this part with respect to x, and then finally the derivative with respect to x of the sigma, and that's noted over here. To take the derivative of this, I just rewrote it as 1 minus x to the negative 1. So when taking the derivative of this expression, we use the chain rule. So we're going to bring the negative to the front. We leave the inside the same, subtract 1 from the exponent, and then we do the chain rule, so we take the derivative of the inside, so we times this by negative 1. So then we multiply this negative by this negative, and we get a positive, and then we move this to the denominator. So we get 1 over the quantity 1 minus x squared, and then you'll notice that this is what we're trying to rewrite as a power series. So next we're going to do term by term differentiation right here. So the derivative of 1 is 0, the derivative of x is 1, the derivative of x squared is 2x, and then I'll just keep going. And then last, we're taking the derivative with respect to x of our sigma right here. So to take the derivative of x to the n, we bring the n to the front, then we subtract 1 from the exponent. And remember, this formula is supposed to give us these terms. So I just want to look at this real quick. We have 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. So that works for n right here. But that would mean for our lower index right here that n would have to start with 1. So now let's just double check. When you take n equals 1 and plug it in here and here, you get 1x to the 1 minus 1. So that's 1 times x to the 0 or just 1. Then we plug in 2 for n, so you get 2x to the 2 minus 1. So that'd be 2 times x to the 1, and that works. So this works great for these terms. So I just wrote it out. We have our function 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared, and it's equal to, in power series form, sigma n starts at 1 goes to infinity of n x to the n minus 1. And then I also want to rewrite this if n were to start at 0. So that means we need to adjust this part so that when we start by plugging in 0, then 1, then 2, and so on, we'll get these terms. So to do that, that means we're going to replace these n's with n plus 1. And right here for this n, if we plug in n plus 1, it would say n plus 1 minus 1, so that's just n. All right, so either of these answers works. This example says find a power series representation for the function f of x equals x over the quantity 1 plus 4x squared. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this x to the front. And then next, because we have 1 over the quantity 1 plus 4x squared, I want to look at the function just 1 over 1 plus 4x. So if we take this function, and instead of 1 plus 4x, we think of it as 1 minus negative 4x. So now it's in a form so that we can rewrite it as a power series. So you can see I took this negative 4x and rewrote it as negative 4x to the n. So in this form, it's a little bit easier to expand. We're going to start by plugging in 0, so you get 1. When you plug in 1, you get negative 4x. When you plug in 2, you get positive 16x squared. When we plug in 3, you get negative 64. 
x to the third. And then next what I want to do, because this part of the function has a 1 over 1 plus 4x to the second power, is I want to look at taking the derivative of this. In order to take the derivative of this, I want to rewrite it as 1 plus 4x to the negative 1. So taking the derivative of this, we're going to use the chain rule. So we move the negative 1 to the front, leave the inside the same, then we're going to subtract 1 from the exponent. And then finally, we times by the derivative of the inside, and then we'll take the derivative of each of these terms. So the derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of negative 4x is negative 4. And then for this term, we bring the 2 to the front, and then we subtract 1. So I'm going to leave this as 2 times 16. And then same thing on this one. I'm going to bring the 3 to the front and leave the 64x squared. And we'll come back to this in a second. So now over here, we have negative 4 over 1 plus 4x quantity squared. And then we have our negative 4 plus 2 times 16x minus 3 times 64x squared and so on. So remember what we're trying to do is we're trying to write a power series for this function right here. This is looking pretty close to this one now. We just have a couple things to take care of. This function has an x and then this one has a negative 4. So to get this function to be in this exact format, we can multiply it by x over negative 4. And when we do this, these negative 4s will cancel, and then we'll have this times by x, which is what we needed up here. So if we multiply this by x over negative 4, we're going to also do the same right here. And over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this negative 1 fourth and distribute it to all of these terms. And I'm going to leave this x in front for right now. So when we distribute the negative 1 fourth to this negative 4, that makes positive 1. When we multiply negative 1 fourth to this term, it now becomes negative and I'm going to leave this 2 here, but the 16 and the 1 fourth is going to make 4. And then you still have that x. Again, on this next term, this negative and negative will become a positive. Again, I'm going to leave this 3 here, and the 64 and the 1 fourth is going to make 16. And then we have our x squared. And then our next term would be negative. All right, so we're getting there. I'm going to drop down this x, and then we're writing this in sigma notation. So the first thing I want to point out is that the terms are alternating. It goes positive, negative, positive, negative. So we're going to write negative 1 to the n. And just double check, when you start by plugging in 0, you get a positive. Then plug in 1, you get negative, so that works. Next, I want to write our expression for 1, 2, 3. Because n starts at 0, we're taking n and we're adding 1. So let's double check this. When you start with 0 for n, you plug it in, you get 0 plus 1 makes 1. Then you plug in 1, 1 plus 1 makes 2, plug in 2, 2 plus 1 makes 3, so that works. And then the last thing we need to account for is the fact that this goes 4x, then 16x squared, and then the next one would have a 64x to the third in it. So you can see getting from this 4x to 16x squared, we're multiplying by 4x. So I wrote 4x to the power of n, and again I just want to double check when you start by plugging in 0. This would become a 1, and that's why you don't have a 4x term here. Then you plug in 1, and that gives you this 4x. Then you plug in 2 for n, and that would give you 16x squared, so it works. And then our very last step, I want to separate these so that it's 4 to the n times x to the n. So I dropped down our negative 1 to the n, and then I'm going to write 4 to the n. Next, I'm going to drop down this n plus 1. And then our last step, this is technically x to the n, and we're going to bring this x in. But this x has a power of 1. And remember, when you have same bases and you're multiplying, you add their exponents. So that would be x to the n plus 1. All right, so this function is equal to this power series. This example says find a power series representation for the natural log of 1 plus x using term by term integration of the equation. And we're given 1 over 1 plus x, which can be rewritten as 1 over 1 minus negative x. And now this is in the right form so that we can rewrite it in a power series. And in expanded form, it's written out here. So it goes 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed. And then our general term is negative x to the n. Finally, because this is a geometric series, it converges when the absolute value of r or x is less than 1. So I have a note here. It says the derivative of the natural log of 1 plus x is 1 over 1 plus x. So again, when you take the derivative of this, it's going to be 1 over the inside function. And then technically, you times by the derivative of the inside, but that's 1. So that's why you get 1 over 1 plus x. So since this is the derivative of this, if we have the expression for 1 over 1 plus x and we need to get back to natural log of 1 plus x, we can integrate this. So we're taking the integral of this function right here. So that means we're also going to take the integral of these terms. 
So with this logic over here, we can say that this integral is equal to ln of 1 plus x. Next, we're going to do term by term integration. So the integral of 1 is x. The integral of negative x is negative x squared over 2. The integral of x squared becomes x cubed over 3. And then because this is an indefinite integral, I added our arbitrary constant. I have a note over here. It says to determine the value of c, let x equal 0 for the equation c equals ln of 1 plus x. So I plugged in 0 for x, and then you have the natural log of 1 plus 0, which is the natural log of 1, which is 0. So c is equal to 0. And now we're going to rewrite this using sigma notation. So the first thing we have, our series is alternating, and our first term is positive. And since n starts at 1, that means we're going to do n minus 1. Then we have x and then x squared over 2, x cubed over 3. So we write x to the n over n. Or we can convert it so it starts with n equals 0. And if you do that, remember you just replace these n's with n plus 1. This example says find a power series representation for the function f of x equals natural log of 3 plus x. And we're going to use the fact that this function is equal to the integral of 1 over 3 plus x dx. So in this example, what I want to do is I want to take this expression right here and rewrite it in the form of 1 over 1 minus something. So then we can rewrite it in sigma notation as a power series. So to do that, the first thing we want to do is we want to factor out a 3. So then inside here we have 1 plus x over 3. Next, I want to move this 3 to the front of the integral, so that's going to be a 1 third. And then instead of 1 plus x over 3, I'm going to rewrite it as 1 minus negative x over 3. So now this is in the right form that we can rewrite it with sigma as a power series. Okay, so it looks a little strange because you have your sigma and then your geometric series formula. And then you also have your integral and your dx. So I want to bring this negative to the front and then raise it to the power of n. And then next I want to rewrite it as x to the n divided by 3 to the n. And now that we finally have this x to the n term right here, we can integrate this with respect to x. So I drop down the 1 third, drop down our sigma, and then also drop down this negative 1 to the n. So I want to focus on this term right here, x to the n. To integrate, we're going to add 1 to the exponent, and then we take the new exponent and divide it. And I want to bring this 1 third back in, so we have 3 to the 1 times 3 to the n. So when we multiply them, we get 3 to the n plus 1. And then right here, I have the note to determine the value of c, let x equal 0. So we have c equals the natural log of 3 plus x. We plug in 0 for x, so we get ln of 3 for c. Okay, so here's our series. And then I also rewrote it where n starts at 1. This example says evaluate the indefinite integral as a power series. So we have the integral of natural log of 1 minus t all divided by t. So even though this starts off with an integral and it's divided by t, first I just want to look at the natural log of 1 minus t. So this function is equal to negative the integral of 1 over 1 minus t. And we needed the negative in front because the variable t has a coefficient of negative 1. And this works out great because this function right here is all ready to go to rewrite in sigma notation as a power series. So I dropped down the negative, I dropped down the integral and the dt, and then just rewrote this function with sigma and then t to the n. And then since our integral is with respect to t and we have that term right here, we can go ahead and integrate. It's an indefinite integral, so I have c and then I drop down the negative, and then we have our sigma. To integrate this t to the n, we add 1 to the exponent, and then we divide by that new exponent. And again, I made the same note. To determine the value of c, let x equal 0. So we have c equals the natural log of 1 minus x. And then I plugged in 0 for x, so you have natural log of 1, which is 0. So c is just equal to 0. So finally, we have the natural log of 1 minus t is equal to this series. So now when we go back to our original problem, we have our series for this natural log of 1 minus t. So that's right here, but then we still need to take this series and we need to divide by t and then integrate. So to find this integral, first we're going to bring this t to the front. Next we're going to substitute this series in for this natural log of 1 minus t. At this point, I'm going to bring this negative to the front of the integral, and then we're going to bring this t inside the sigma. And when we bring this t in here, remember this is t to the power of 1. Here we have t to the n plus 1. If we broke this up, it would be t to the n times t to the 1. So the t to the 1 here would cancel with this t, and you would just be left with t to the n. And now we're ready to integrate this t to the n. So this is a definite integral. So when we integrate, we have our arbitrary constant, so I just put it in the front. I drop down this negative and then drop down the sigma. To integrate this t, we're going to add 1. So we get t to the n plus 1. 
And then we take this new exponent and we multiply it in the denominator, but there's already an n plus 1, so that's going to make n plus 1 quantity squared. And then I also rewrote the series starting at n equals 1. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Math with Yosh, and hit the like button on this video. Thanks!